So when I'm streaming Diablo 2 Resurrected, I get asked all the time, bro, why are you even playing single player? Isn't it pointless? Well, the thing is, actually, it's not. And actually, in a ton of different ways, offline single player is actually way better than online multiplayer. So that's what I'm coming at you with today. All the ways that single player is the best way to play Diablo 2 Resurrected. And just to keep everything fair and balanced, I'm also going to go over the benefits or advantages of playing online multiplayer. And make sure you stick around all the way to the end of the video because I'm going to go over my recommendation of exactly what you should play and, well, we'll say when you should be playing it. And that'll be in my opinion, of course. So first of all, we're going to talk about offline benefits. And to do that, for the very first one here, we're going to look at our online characters list. And I know it seems a little bit counterintuitive, but trust me, it'll all be crystal clear in just a second. So looking at this list, we have ladder characters, non-ladder characters, maybe you have hardcore ladder and non-ladder characters. You can even have pre-expansion characters. And unfortunately, I do believe they raised the cap, but still on PC, I believe it is 24. And actually on consoles, uh, I think it possibly is even less depending on your console. But as we go ahead, jump over to offline, and we're gonna scroll down my list of characters here. These are all just standard uh, single player characters. I don't really have a lot of hardcore. I got one hardcore character down here that I was just messing around with, but you see, this is literally a metric ass ton of characters. Yeah, and that's because on PC specifically, you can have an unlimited amount of characters. Once again, on single player, I believe on Switch or maybe some of the other consoles, this is a limit on here of 20 or 24, or I'm not exactly sure what the limit is, but specifically PC for Diablo 2 Resurrected, the number of offline characters you can have is literally unlimited. You could have dozens and dozens and dozens, probably hundreds of characters over here if you wanted to. So you never fall into that place where, oh no, the next ladder's starting and I don't know, I'm gonna have to delete these mules or I'm gonna have to delete these hardcore characters or something like that in order to create a new one to play the new ladder. Now the next one is probably the most common or well-known or probably the largest benefit to playing offline single player. And that is coming over to the options, gameplay settings, scrolling all the way to the bottom. And right here, offline difficulty scaling. So this is the equivalent of just adding more people into your game online. So instead of having to go out and try to find people to play with, or maybe your friends aren't online at that particular time, on offline, you can set it to players one. So the game is, you know, the easiest, just like you were going online in a game by yourself. Or let's say you found two buddies, you turn this up to three. Or let's say you want your best possible chances for finding high runes, go ahead and move it over to players eight difficulty. Go ahead and hit apply and bam, players set to eight difficulty. Or if you're on PC, just open the prompt over here to type players slash players three, boom. And you can set your players count that way. And this will work across all of the platforms. So no longer are you gonna be searching and searching and searching for somebody to play with to increase the amount of experience you can get or increase the drops. You can just go ahead and move that slider over and get way more experience. And like I said, hopefully get lucky and find one of them high runes. Next up, let's go ahead and jump down to the catacombs. I'll tell you about this next benefit. Now look at this map right here, up in the upper left-hand corner, just up into the right and we get down to the next level. Maybe we're going to hunt Andy. It's already revealed. Check out this map right here, already revealed, down and just to the right again, and boom, we're right down to Andario. Now the thing on single player is these maps are always revealed as long as you don't switch between difficulties, nightmare to hell, hell to normal, or whatever like that. As long as you don't jump between difficulties, this map will stay exactly the same. But also, you can intentionally reset your map by jumping to normal, then jumping back to hell difficulty. You don't like the way that one looks. Go to normal, go to hell. So you can farm maps, and also you can keep maps forever. So such as this, I specifically farmed this map so that I could actually come down and farm Andario even faster. The way down is right next to the waypoint here, and then the way down to the final level is right next to the stairs again. So there's a very important thing you can do on single player. Perhaps you're farming lower cross for high runes or something along this lines. You want to go ahead and farm Andaro when she becomes terrorized and bang. Here we are pretty much as fast as you can get down here, and we can go ahead and do that. So it does make it so you can farm more efficiently. You don't always have to like navigate around, be perfect at map reading. All you gotta do is reveal that map one time and you can save it forever having the perfect LK map or no matter where you're farming. So next up for the single player offline, look at this right here. This is actually a ladder only rune word. So you can only make it online ladder, right? Well, not exactly. Cause here we are offline single player and I have a cure him now. It's going to depend on when you watch this. I don't know if this is going to be a ladder only rune word when you do, but currently you can only make this on ladder. But every time a rune word is ever introduced to online ladder or introduced online for that matter, it automatically comes to offline single player 
and you can instantly make it day one. So the good thing about this also is as soon as they're announced, even before they're introduced, you can start saving up the items in order to go ahead and make it the very first seconds it's released. Now, most of the time and literally all the time, they're going to be re released on ladder. So you got to go out and farm the stuff up at the beginning of a season, hope you find it and eventually you can make it. But you could be saving this stuff up for months or hey, at this point, even years and then make even the most godliest rune words the very second that they're released and use them instantly. So this is also a huge benefit over if you're playing non ladder, because just imagine you want to go ahead and make your cure helm to do your energy shield Nova Sorceress. Well, you can't make one, but I guess perhaps you could trade one ones that were transferred over when one ladder ended and the next one started, but they can kind of be pretty expensive since you can't actually make them on non ladder, but you never have to worry about that if you're playing offline single player. So up next, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. See, I'm actually in my basement right now on my computer. Obviously, the computer's hooked up to the Internet, but let's say you want to play Diablo 2 Resurrected and your Internet's down. Let's say you want to go and play it in your backyard. Let's say you want to go out on the boat and play it. Let's say you're on a long car ride. You want to play Diablo 2 Resurrected or you want to go out to the park or anything like that. Well, the good thing about playing offline single player is you do not need an Internet connection in order to play it. And you don't need to worry about online stability. You don't have to worry about server lag or anything along those lines. As long as you go ahead and download and install the game. So you have to have the Internet. The one initial time you install it, you never have to have the Internet again. So let's say you actually want to get outside, maybe touch grass, perhaps get some sunlight raining down on you, get some of that vitamin C, D, L, I don't know, whatever vitamin it is you get from the sun. You can go ahead and do that because you do not necessarily need an Internet connection when you're playing single player offline Diablo 2 Resurrected. And I don't want to gloss over another incredibly important point that I did kind of mention in there with no internet connection. You don't have to worry about any internet lag. No little bits where you're playing hardcore and all of a sudden, oh, what, my character's not moving. Oh, I'm dead. Oopsie. So none of the negatives that come along with playing online and having that internet connection, having the, you know, connection to the server or anything, none of that negative comes along with the offline play. Alrighty, now let's say you're somebody who wants to try out a brand new build you never tried, but you don't want to spend like 40 hours to trade for the high runes and for the gear. Or let's say maybe you're someone who just doesn't want to dedicate 1000 hours to finding all the runes to make a dual dream paladin or or whatever you want to do. The good thing about single player, you probably read it up there already. I'm on there is this online hero editor that I'm on right now. So you can go ahead and create any character, any piece of gear, whether it's something that can really be made in the game or not. You can completely make things up on these hero editors. And the best thing, in my opinion, let's say for ladder reset, you want to try a build. Let's say you want to try a hammered in for the first time and you never played one, but you want to see kind of how it plays. Are you going to like the play style or, you know, do you really want to spend 200 hours? Like I said, farming up the gear, you can go ahead and hero edit in all of this stuff, Enigma. We got Shaco, you know, the Herald of Zacharum. We got our gear for our mercenary. All these uh, 40 to life pally combat, Torch and Annie. Anything that you literally want. All you have to do is go in here. We can go ahead and bring in a ring. Sure, why not? We're going to go ahead and add a ring to the inventory. And we can edit it any way we want to. We can go ahead and make it a set item. We can go ahead and make it a normal item. We can go ahead and... Uh, hey, let's just go ahead and add attack speed. Do you have attack speed on rings? Not normally. But hey, let's say you want to go ahead and make yourself white rings like they used to exist back in the day that were completely hacked items. You can do that. So, hey, we'll go ahead and add 100 increased attack speed. Bam. Go ahead and save. And now you kind of got, well, not exactly like a white ring used to be, but we got a 100 attack speed ring right here. So you can literally just create up completely nonsensical fictional stuff. You can recreate an exact character that you want to try and play. Maybe you want to play it for ladder reset, or if you just don't, like I said, just don't want to farm up spending thousands of hours, but you just want to get out there with them godly characters and slap down some monsters. So you can go ahead on Hero Editor and go ahead and do that. If you want to see a full guide exactly how to use a Hero Editor, how to get the characters downloaded, get them in your save files and get out there and playing them, let me know down in the comments. So another great thing for offline you can't necessarily do online, well, not legally anyways, is run different mods for the game. Maybe you want to go ahead and add something like a loot filter. Here's a picture of an example of a loot filter that someone created. Or single player offline. Um, so here's some other stuff you can have uh, right here shows just all the different things that are on the particular item. And you can kind of have these set up in a million different ways. There's even some of them that go ahead and show the ranges that stuff can roll. So that can be very beneficial to you. 
So a really great thing is having different mods, maybe like this loot filter one. There's other ones like Go Mule, so you don't have to have a million different mules. You can have all your items saved on the Go Mule, and then you can transfer them over when you want to go ahead and use them. Or there's even different mods that people created that kind of turn the game into a completely different game, kind of like we'll say something like Diablo 2 Remodded. Now this particular mod, I'm not particularly super experienced in it, but you can kind of select what type of uh, the things in the mod that you actually want to play with. Perhaps you just want like the unlimited stash. Maybe you just want a few tweaks here and there, or he did go ahead and rebalance and change a ton of different things, different builds and things like that. So you can play it as if it's a completely different Diablo 2 resurrected game. And there's gonna be a ton of more mods out there that I haven't mentioned that probably I don't even know about. Feel free to list them down in the comments what your favorite ones are. But yeah, the benefits of, you know, mixing up variety and different change for single player with all these different mods and the different quality of life things that we wish they would add online, but they just won't for some reason. You can go ahead and do that offline single player. Now, there are some ways that online is definitely better. And the first one we're gonna jump into, let's say you wanna make a grief, but that low rune right there, you just can't find it. Let's say just RNG, luck of the draw, whatever, luck of the drops, you found multiple burr runes. Maybe you found a 32020 small charm. Those are worth an astronomical amount of high runes, but it's no low rune. You still can't make that grief on single player. But online, you could easily take that burr rune and trade it for a bunch of different things, including if you needed to get that low rune. So that's one giant benefit of playing online is being able to trade with people so you don't have to find exactly the specific items that you're looking for in order to play with. All you have to do is find something that's good and valuable. Go ahead and trade that up, get the things you need, and then get out there and slapping down demons. So offline single player, I mean, it can get a little bit lonely. You don't have to worry about that online because let's say you have real life friends, you meet people in discords, Facebook groups, whatever. You can go ahead and hop online. You see them right here. You can go ahead and play with these guys. So you can hop into a game, party up and get out there and slap down demons with your best friend, with your grandma, with your kids. So definitely a benefit of playing online different social aspects and you know actually communicating getting out there and just having a great time with you know people you care about and friends of yours so this is one i couldn't necessarily show you myself but it kind of piggybacks off the last one playing with friends but that is when you're playing offline single player the pvp community is very small in fact there's only one person so when you're playing online you can actually do pvp player versus player so this is one entire aspect of the game it's incredibly competitive if you want to get uh, really into the nitty gritty and be an absolute expert in Diablo 2 Resurrected, PvP is kind of the way to go. So definitely if you're playing offline single player, this is one aspect of the game you're going to completely and 100% miss out on. Now for the next one on the list, you see right over here, there's a list of people. You can see the amount of experience you have, all the 99s, it kind of lists where you're at. This is the ladder leaderboards. And this is one thing you completely uh, miss once again when you're playing offline single player. If you're one of those people that want to go ahead and compete in the ladder to see, you know, how long you can play nonstop to stay up at the top of ladder with your experience or whatever, you go ahead and do that. This isn't something that particularly interests me because literally this is just tracking who goes ahead and just sits on their computer for seven straight days and just only runs upstairs to go take a leak or something. It's not really necessarily a level of skill or anything like that. It's just who sits on their computer the longest. But if you are one of those people that wants to compete, in the ladder race yeah you can't do that offline single player now i'm going to go ahead and show you a couple clips here it's going to show you another benefit to playing online and ooh, it absolutely pains me playing single player after you find the same great item over and over again what are you going to do with nine towels armors so the other day farming andy i actually found three towels armors in like a half hour and i already have several perfect towel rushes armors so i guess i'm just going to go ahead and toss these on the ground well when you're playing online it definitely wouldn't do that. Some people would be so stoked, so excited for someone to give them a Tal Rosh's armor. So you don't have to go through the pain of just chucking them on the ground and letting them get deleted. You can actually go ahead and donate those, give them away to, we'll call them less fortunate folks or someone who is really searching for Tal Rosh's armor or just wants anything valuable that they can then trade for the items that they're looking for. So in my opinion, it is also a kind of a huge benefit online to be able to share the wealth with other people in the community, perhaps that are less fortunate, don't have enough as much time, maybe they're just newer to the game or whatever reason you want to say, but you can definitely give away those great items and really help somebody out. So what's the final verdict? What I believe anyways, what most people should do, play ladder reset right when it resets, play for a few weeks, a month or whatever you really feel like, and then go to single player and go ahead and set some goals there, mess around, test some things out. You can have a great old time on single player. You can go back to the next ladder 
and then come back to the same single player offline characters kind of in the same sort of cycle. Now, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe up if you are new to the channel. Peace out, fellas, and keep slaying.